Hey everybody and welcome. For anyone who doesn't quite know your movie history, let me fill you in on a few things just for some context. The man often considered the father of modern zombies is of course George A. Romero, the man behind Night of the Living Dead and Dawn of the Dead and so many other of the dead movies. And I think it's safe to say that without this guy and his collaborators of course, we would not have Resident Evil as we know it today. Because so much of what we see in damn near every zombie related thing these days stems from his work. And so you can't really downplay his importance. And if you haven't seen any of his movies, I greatly recommend them, especially Dawn of the Dead. If you only watch one, check out the original Dawn of the Dead. It'll pretty much always be my favorite of his. But with this guy being pretty much the inspiration for all the zombie stuff that came afterwards. There was no better person to turn to once Capcom wanted to make a movie adaptation of the first Resident Evil. And so the man wrote a script that, uh, yeah, it made a lot of changes. Took a lot of liberties and was just different in general because this was back during the 90s when most of the sort of foundational lore of the Resident Evil game series wasn't even established yet. But he took a stab at it and... Frankly, as I read the script when I was a teenager, I remember loving it quite a bit, especially comparing it to Paul W.S. Anderson's first Resident Evil movie as sort of a reference point to what we actually got compared to what we could have got. But Capcom and Constantine Films ultimately didn't go with his script because it was so violent and gory and also would have just been really expensive to shoot. Because this guy just threw everything in there. Tyrants, yawn, you know, just all the things you would want to see, they were pretty much in there. There were major changes to characters, but in general, all of the things you would want to see in a Resident Evil adaptation were in there. They were present, in some form or fashion. And so this script has kind of been seen as a lost opportunity, a story that never got to be told. And it's been kind of a shame that nothing was ever done with it at all. I mean, hell, if nothing else, it would make for a pretty amazing animated movie. Although, I don't even know what the legality of them using it nowadays would be. But the good news is we are getting an adaptation of this script, finally, after all these years, thanks to an artist named October Keegan. She has taken it upon herself to do a comic book adaptation of George A. Romero's Resident Evil, adapting things as faithfully from his script as possible, while also filling in some of the blanks herself that kind of exists, you know, between the words in the script and also because it was just a first draft a rough draft and so certain things could be cleaned up here and there but yeah it seems like we're going to be getting a very a very nice very polished comic book experience out of this thing now you can go to october's twitter to get the full details i'll talk about it a bit here and i'll also link things in the description to get you where you want to go but the plan seems to be that she's going to be releasing one new page every thursday and patreon members will receive pages early on Mondays. Now, I can't link directly to her Patreon because she offers not safe for work stuff and YouTube's been weird about that kind of thing in the past, according to other content creators. So I, I'm gonna, you know, play it safe, but I will happily link you to her Twitter and you can, like I said, get to where you want to go from there. I myself can't wait to see the finished product. And judging by sort of the pre-release material and the first page that was just released, I think it's going to be really, really good and definitely worth seeking out each week. Because just this intro has a really awesome callback that she fit in, using the script, but also using a very key visual from the original Resident Evil that you guys will no doubt recognize. And yeah, if this uh, if this piques your interest, definitely check it out. Just so you know ahead of time, you know, so nobody blames her for the changes. Like I said, the characters in George Romero's script were pretty different from how they were in the games. Most notably, as you'll see in my thumbnail and everything, Chris Redfield was a Native American and also just a FYI, he was not a member of Stars in the script. He was Jill's boyfriend, I believe. He was a Native American. He had like a pet hawk or a pet eagle or something along those lines. I haven't read the script since I was a teenager, so I don't remember for sure. But what I love is that she's still in Chris's design in her comic. October gave him that, you know, sleeveless overshirt or whatever it is to kind of be a visual callback to his green Stars vest, you know, just to give us a little bit more of a connection to the Chris Redfield that we know. While still adapting 
George Romero's work. That's a really nice touch. And and another change that you'll see is that Barry Burton was black. It uh, <laughs> Judging by the artwork and going by the various tweets I've seen her reply to, it seems like she in her head has cast Lawrence Fishburne, aka Morpheus himself, as Barry in this comic. And uh, I'll tell you what, that's some good fan casting for, for that particular version of Barry. Whether you love or hate the concept of changing it, that's something else entirely, but if if you're going off of a basis of Barry has to be black, Lawrence Fishburne is a hell of a, a go-to actor, or should I say likeness for that. Now, I can't quite tell who Wesker is based on, but uh, I will say my fan cast for a long time, up until he got too old for the part, obviously, uh, would have been Robert Patrick as Wesker. You know, if the movie could have been made in the early to mid-2000s, Robert Patrick, otherwise known as the liquid metal Terminator from Terminator 2 Judgment Day, I think he could have absolutely knocked it out of the park. And hell, Val Kilmer could have too, now that I think about it. But yeah, guys, definitely check this out. I think it's going to be a lot of fun reading this thing. And if you want to support the artist, look into the various options that exist. You can even get the pages in full color or black and white. I myself am kind of liking the looks of the black and white stuff so far. I don't have any kind of a bias for that or anything. Just, uh, you know, just, just, just saying. So this is kind of a short video so far, so I figure I'll, uh, Go ahead and talk about another topic that's been on my mind that I wouldn't really want to make a solo video about. But uh, for those who might not know, Capcom started taking applications for this thing called the Capcom Creators Club or something along those lines. Capcom Creators Program. And it's a way for them to have a set of creators who will promote Capcom products, basically. They, they'll give early access to games and... I guess, early news to these creators who are part of their program and will end up in turn promoting these creators and giving them exposure they otherwise wouldn't get, that kind of a thing. And I'm not gonna lie, I, I started to fill out the application on the first day it was available. Cause you know, I love so many of Capcom's properties, whether it's Resident Evil, Devil May Cry, Mega Man, not so much main Mega Man, but uh, I'm a big fan of Mega Man X and Legends and Zero and basically all the spinoffs. Um, and Monster Hunter, of course. And so yeah, I kind of at first jumped at the opportunity to fill out this application and I got all the way to the point of hitting submit and I kind of stopped because I realized, and you know, chances are slim for getting accepted to something like that anyway, because they're probably going to go poking through my channel to kind of gauge my eligibility. And I don't really pull any punches when something particularly annoys me or when a certain issue really grates on me. And my thumbnails tend to be kind of provocative in a way. So the chances were slim anyway, but just on the off chance I would have been selected, I kind of started thinking about what that would mean. And the most obvious thing is that at that point, you're kind of expected to be a Capcom shill. Because I'm sure once you're in this program, if you want to stay part of the program, you're not gonna be able to say negative things about Capcom or their various products they're gonna be putting out over the next few years. And with Capcom especially, there's kind of a pattern with them where they'll have a big upswing where all of a sudden they're doing everything right, they're making good stuff, and then there's gonna be a massive slump, almost like they get full of themselves and they think they can do no wrong, their shit don't stink, and then they put out a bunch of stinkers and piss off their fan bases and then kind of rinse and repeat. And I don't want to have to be one of those people who has to pretend like I don't smell the shit when I'm in the middle of it, you know? <laughs> There's probably a more elegant way to phrase that, but hell, I said what I said. And that's also why I don't belong in a program like that. But I don't know, I'm just kind of curious what you guys think of something like the Capcom Creators program. Whether it's valid and whether you would be able to trust a channel who becomes part of it. Because even for myself, I started thinking about, like, would I even want to watch a channel that was part of the program and... You know, whether that would make me question if their opinions are actually their opinions or if they're basically reading from a script of things that they're supposed to say and all that. And I think the answer for myself was no, I wouldn't watch a channel like that. It would be kind of a turn off. And so, you know, all these thoughts kind of led to me just scrapping the whole application form. Just being like, nah, you know what? It's not a good idea at all whatsoever for me anyway. I'm not gonna poo-poo any other channel who wants to be a part of a program like that, especially small YouTubers. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of channels who would be able to leverage an opportunity like that into something huge for themselves. It's just 
kind of use it as a springboard to launch higher than they otherwise would and then maybe eventually get to do their own thing. For me, I just don't see that as a strategy I could go with for any length of time and still feel like I'm doing my best. You know what I mean? Like, I just, I don't want to feel like I have to say certain things. I don't want to feel like I'm under anybody's thumb any more than every YouTuber is under YouTube's thumb. <laughs> you know, that's always a very unfortunate reality. But yeah, I don't know. It's an interesting thing to consider. But ultimately, I just don't think it's, uh, it's a good fit. But that's all I got for you guys today. Let me know what you all think about these topics in the comments below. As usual, I love hearing from you all. I'm baffled, and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye!